You know the deal, Steam Pages critiquing the 52 Fragments Philosophical Abstract Surreal Exploration 3D Experimental esoteric series of games and experiences beginning November 1st, 2023. One fragment will be added to the library each week for one year. I get the idea of an art game, but I hate the concept of this slow release. Buildmaster Marsville, Colony Sims City Builder Strategy War Mars. There's no gameplay in the trailer, big bad. This is a weird addition. Is this a classic mobile war game with bridge building? What the hell are you trying to do? Yeah, it kind of looks like a bad war game for mobile. Dragon Bobby The Story of Life, Adventure in the Exploration Atmospheric. Someone is trying to be Spyro? I don't know, I never played Spyro, so I have no context for this. As a kind of platforming puzzle adventure, looks decent. Probably a good engine. Warbringers of Angrul? Early access sandbox medieval fantasy PvE. Is this War Tales or Mountain Blade? I'm not sure, but it's hitching. Well, it's an early access. And overall doesn't look very good. Spell Shot. Survive against hordes of zombies using bullets enchanted with spells purchased from a re-rolling shop. Fast-paced roguelite FPS. Create unique builds by combining and upgrading spells, activating set bonuses, and collecting rare items. That actually sounds cool. I just hate how it looks. The gun and the environment look stylistic and fun, the enemies look horrible, and it's a very bad juxtaposition. Rogue-Narok, action roguelite bullet heaven, shoot em up RPG. It looks like it's trying to do slightly more than your average survival's clone. The UI is not bad, considering. Looks like there's some kind of overworld campaign. Kinda looks too much like Brotato for my liking. But that's kinda cool, there's a demo, I think I'm gonna check it out. Dungeon Man Early Access RPG Strategy Card Game 2.5D Looks like a very badly made Slay the Spire. Monologue Winter Melancholy Visual Novel Adventure Single Player Text Based First of all, the trailer has no motion in it, it's all just screenshots, and the name Monologue makes me feel like it's not actually a game. Rekindling the Flame Action RPG Hack and Slash Roguelite Top-down zone-based hack and slash with overworld. Looks like Diablo, but not quite. It's free to play, so if Diablo costs too much, there you go. One Million Zombies is a casual arcade-inspired game where the player's main goal is to destroy as many zombies as possible with an array of vehicles and weapons. So if you want to combine your way through millions of zombies, have fun, I guess. Looks like Carmageddon on steroids. Could be fun though, and there's a demo for it. You know what? I'm gonna try it. Necro Slayer is a dark fantasy styled open world roguelite game. Yeah, kinda looks like a survivor's clone in first person. That looks confusing as all hell. Doesn't look like it's running well either. Penta Zero is an intense arcade bullet hell that is quite difficult to describe in a single sentence. The news several. Does look very weird, but I think I'm recognizing the Undertale combat mechanism. In Solomon's Link, catch a glimpse of two lives of the lamb. A pair of fugitives raiding an abandoned factory to survive. Adventure point and click puzzle isometric. That's an interesting combination, but I don't really see anything hooking me on this. Cosmic Gunslinger Alien Outlaws is, well, another survivor's clone with Brotato design sense. So yeah. Barbarians and Beast is a simple Golden Axe ripoff and it doesn't even look as good as a 30. wait, 40 year old game? Ah, the first Berserker. We saw this in the Game Awards. Hardcore action role playing game. It looks like one of those over stylized ballers I dislike. Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion. For those who need the Turok remasters. I don't think I do. This doesn't look good. Light No Fire is the next game from Hello Games, the makers of No Man's Sky. What they're saying is, let's take all the tech we developed for procedurally generating entire galaxies and focus on more quality in a smaller space, still about the size of the Earth. And if they have been working on this game for a few years, which it looks like they have, using the tech they evolved on No Man's Sky, on a more condensed game with a denser quality, with fantasy elements and more stressing the surviving building side of things, 
I think I'm in for it, but I did really like No Man's Sky, even as it was coming out. Grey Zone Warfare is an immersive tactical FPS with a maximum focus on realism, which means it looks like it's trying to be Call of Duty slash Rainbow Six, but with Tarkov elements, and so far doesn't look like they're trying anything new. Dune Imperium from Legendary and Direwolf is the award-winning board game of strategy and intrigue in the iconic universe of Dune. So it's a digital board game. I think I've heard about it, but I never actually played it. With Timothy Chalamet! <laughs> Don't put the menu as a screenshot, it doesn't help anyone. But fine, it's a digital board game that's trying to ride the wave of the movies. Cross Blitz is a unique RPG deck builder featuring fast-paced tactical combat with loads of cards to collect and synergies to wield. So far it looks like a very basic card battler. Okay, maybe not that basic. Nice long video. I like my videos long. That's how you can show a lot of gameplay. I mean, let's talk about this. Long gaming videos are good, but you should still hook the player at least in the first 30 seconds. You can definitely see a lot of sides of the game in this, and I like that. The best way to know if you like a game without actually buying and playing it is watching gameplay of it. Lots of it. And I'm guessing this is the most you can get with just a Steam video. So good on you, Taco Boy Studios. Learn from this. I mean, you can have a really short trailer, 30 seconds, maybe 60, showing the best parts in rapid succession, hooking the player and giving a good feel from the start, but also include five, maybe even 10 minute videos showing actual gameplay in session. Before I wrap it up for today, I want to talk about the big gaming news of the day, which is the day before. If you're not up to date, about two years ago, a company that is a bit unknown called Fantastic or something like that put up a Steam page with really good looking graphics and an interesting hook, which I like, which is an open world zombie survival game. And at least it got me interested, but I was cautiously optimistic. From then on, we got into delays and conflicts with a weather app for some reason, and a trailer that was copied from Call of Duty. And it was released a few days ago to raving negative reviews. I saw gameplay of it and it looks like ass, it's buggy as all hell, desolate world, uninteresting combat, a lot of annoying bugs, not even melee. And it's more like a bad extraction shooter than something that wants to be the division, but blander. A lot of the things I saw could be attributed to bad server design or unexpected load on the servers, I guess. And it's supposed to be an early access release for development for another year, but it still doesn't excuse how ass this game was. And I'm saying was because yesterday I read that the game has been delisted and the studio has been disbanded. And apparently Daisy and Rust are making fun of it now. Before they released, they put out a statement, something about that everyone thought it was a scam and they tried to rebuke it like a puny five-year-old. And all I have to say is a good thing I was cautious. They claimed it wasn't a scam, but if it wasn't a scam and it wasn't an UE ball type of money pit, then these people were at least deluding themselves. And assuming a lot of people worked on it, including unpaid volunteers, I actually find it weird that no developer spoke out about this, even anonymously. I mean, I've been working in the industry for a few years now, I'm not a AAA developer, but if I was working on a game like this, seeing the promises they were making, seeing the state of the game even with an early access launch, I would have said something. And especially from the managerial side, even when people expecting it to be bad, you should expect a server load. So that was really not an excuse. I know you're not Diablo, but still. So that's it. I don't know if this will be a cautionary tale for years to come or a singular blip of gaming history. In any case, thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Stay good. Have fun.